it was in this manner that they discovered Mr. Prezada um, and phoned him and invited him to our home. Um, so I'm going to stop there as our way of introducing the story because everything that I just read is a setup. It's not on the conveyor belt timeline that we're going to be on for the rest of the story where everything is moving forward um, about at the same pace because before we could get to that, uh, which we're about to get to, we had to go through all of this explanation, this summary, this setup um, that prepares us to be on that timeline that's coming next. And this is all foundational to the building of this story. Um, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit to the next page, uh, the top of 242, um, where Lelia has asked for a glass to set uh, the table. Um, and she says, the glass is for the Indian man. And um, her father says, Mr. Perzada won't be coming today. More importantly, Mr. Perzada is no longer considered Indian. Uh, my father announced, brushing salt from the cashews out of his trim black beard, not since partition, our country was divided, 1947. Um, and that is the partition of India, right? That is when um, India um, gained its sovereignty from England. Um, it was done in such a weird way, in a devastating way, way um, for the population of the colony um, now becoming two nation states, uh, India and Pakistan. It was in 1947 um, uh, the Muslim population formed a nation state of Pakistan and the Hindu population formed the nation state of India. There were more religious groups than those two in India at the time. Um, still are, uh, but those were the only two that were like granted a nation state. This was done by um, somebody, an English person in England. Uh, that person had never been to India. It was these really arbitrary lines were drawn um, that caused a lot of suffering um, in 1947. Um, and so this is a moment for these parents who undoubtedly lived through that. If it's 1971, then this was 23 years ago. The parents are probably older than 23. They probably remember this very clearly. Um, they might have been young adults at the time. Uh, and this was a really formative moment for them in, in terms of their national identity. Uh, we find out that they're from Calcutta, which um, is kind of closer to now Bangladesh than um, East Pakistan, um, which was a contested area. It's a city that's kind of on the border, uh, so that probably had a very profound impact on their city, especially. Um, and he is not only telling Lelia that, no, he is Pakistani, he is not Indian, um, but that he is no longer considered Indian. Um, he probably was, he too, you know, lived through partition and was once Indian and is now Pakistani and is about to be going through another transition as well. We know this because we know history that he will become Bangladeshi. Um, and so because this story is building a history as well um, alongside the narrative that's taking place in this meanwhile time, like this meanwhile time in Massachusetts um, that is contemporary to this history that, you know, we could Google it, we could read a book, we could figure out what happened. Um, and it is Jhumpa Lahiri's task as the writer of this story to include some of the history of what was happening in um, East Pakistan in 1971 um, so that we best understand this narrative of what was happening in Massachusetts in 1971 um, with this Indian family and this man from Dhaka. Um, and so next I want to jump to, oh, I want to summarize uh, a little bit. We know that Mr. Prasada is upset, or not Mr. Prasada, excuse me, that um, Lelia's father, who's the last name we never get, I don't think, um, says, you know, 
what are you learning in school? You're not learning any of this. And uh, do you study this? Do you study history, geography? And at the bottom of uh, page 243, we get another series of lists. So I want to show you that with this paragraph now. Um, Lil Lilia has plenty to learn in school, my mother said. We live here now. She was born here. She seemed genuinely proud of that fact as if it were a reflection of my character. In her estimation, I knew I was assured of a safe life, an easy life, a fine education, every opportunity. These are four things that you can have in America, um, being born in America, according to um, Lelia and Lelia's mom. Um, I would never have to, and then here's another list, and this list is saying something else. Uh, I would never have to eat rationed food or obey curfews or watch riots from my rooftop or hide neighbors in water tanks to prevent them from being shot as she and my father had. Um, so now she's describing their lives in India um, by saying that she would never have to have those experiences in Massachusetts. Um, and now we're in dialogue. Imagine having to place her in a decent school. Imagine having her read during power failures by the light of kerosene lamps. Um, imagine the pressures, the tutors, the constant exams. Um, and that is an imagined uh, a what if scenario, right? That is what would Lelia's life look like if we were still in India? She would have these things to deal with. Um, of course she doesn't know about those things. Um, and then we get the real hit of the contrast with put those nuts away. Um, and I don't know if cashews are particularly more common in India than they are in Boston, but I can guess that by the way they're being treated in this paragraph. I can guess that, um, that they are a signal that her mom that Lelia's mom wants her dad to put that Indian snack away because we are an American family now. Um, I don't know if that's true, but that's me giving a reading. Um, and then Lelia says in her narrator voice, um, not in her speak, not in dialogue, we learned American history, of course, and American geography. That year, every year, it seemed, we began by studying the Revolutionary War. We were taken in school buses on field trips to visit Plymouth Rock and to walk the Freedom Trail and to climb to the top of the Bunker Hill Monument. We made dioramas out of colored construction paper depicting George Washington crossing the choppy waters of the Delaware River. And we made puppets of King George wearing white tights and a black bow in his hair. During tests, we were given blank maps of the 13 colonies and asked to fill in names, dates, capitals. I could do it with my eyes closed. Uh, and that is a series of lists. It's hard to organize them, but that paragraph is just a big list um, of these things that Lelia encounters in school um, that have to do with history and geography. Um, of course, she's learning them about the, the 13 colonies. If you grew up in one of the 13 colonies, many of you grew up in Massachusetts or New England. I grew up in Virginia. It was the same way. You learn all about uh, the Revolutionary War. In Virginia, they also really hit you with the Civil War. Um, and a lot of time is given to those two conflicts because they are the biggest conflicts in American history up until the World Wars. And so... Um, and they were fought on American soil. There's like artifacts of them. We can go and look at them. Um, and we don't get taught world history in the same way. Um, we don't get taught about the partition of India very often. Um, and even though it was, by a lot of accounts, a, a genocide, it was a huge... Um, it had a huge death count, millions, in the millions. Um, but we don't hear about it because it wasn't us. Um, and that is what she's trying to highlight. And she drives that home with the list rather than saying, we didn't learn Indian stuff, we learned American stuff. She gave us the list. It's a replacement for summary. Over and over and over again throughout this story.
something effective that you could do as a student of this story um, is go through and find all the lists. Uh, there's plenty of them. As you now see, they take a lot of forms. Um, they are about a lot of different things, but they always replace summary. And they always kind of tell you that this thing that has been made into a list is important. So um, this understanding of Indian history is important. And this understanding that American children are not taught Indian history is important too. On the bottom of page 244, uh, there's an amazing paragraph long example of characterization of how to introduce a character and to really show you that character. I'm not going to read that paragraph because I want to move on, but um, if you are trying to get clues on how to be giving a detailed depiction of a character, then take clues from um, Jupe Lahiri's depiction of Mr. Perzada through Lilia's eyes. Um, as is shown in the paragraph on the bottom of page 244. Since I've spoken so much about irony, um, I want to come back to it here to show you that it, it really is a thread in this story. It's something that continues, something that makes this story very continuous, very consecutive, um, which is important when you're looking at how to write anything um, that's particularly long, like how do, uh, how do ideas thread throughout the story. Um, in effect, I think Lytton called it flow. Um, in a class that we had, like how does something um, follow you through a story? So the irony follows us through this story. And you can see it at the bottom of page 244. Uh, Mr. Perzada makes a joke. He says, another, another refugee, I'm afraid, on Indian territory. And he's joking. He's saying, here I am, another uh, refugee, another non-Indian uh, anymore, right, um, on your doorstep, uh, and you are owners of this house, and you are Indian. And so he's making a joke out of this really dark thing that has happened in that part of the world, right, um, or is happening currently. And he says, and uh, Lilia's dad answers him, with their estimating nine million at the last count, um, which we don't know if um, Lilia's dad was joking when he said that back to him, if he was like laughing as he said it back. I would imagine that he wasn't um, because that's serious, right? And so we're seeing this contrast of, of light and dark um, and then skip a paragraph and we're seeing um, one can only hope um, as he's eating, right? He's eating what Lilia's mom has cooked. Um, he says, one can only hope reaching for another one of these mincemeat kebabs um, that Dhaka's refugees are as heartily fed. 